As you may or may not know, my wife and I just got back from Vegas. It was a great trip. We ate, we drank, we had a blast. But then we got home and looked at the credit card, and uh, I gotta say, it doesn't matter how much fun you're having, 25 bucks for a drink is a ripoff. Frickin' Vegas. I hate getting ripped off, and so do the lads over at Harry's. They spent years watching the razor blade companies rip people off and said, No more! Not all heroes wear capes, my friends, and they want to prove that they're legit by offering you hot dogs a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. I've been telling you about them for months, and I'm genuinely proud to have Harry's as a sponsor of this show. I wasn't kidding. The plastic, futuristic-looking crap razors you get at the store are overpriced, and they're poor quality. Harry's blades are crisp, clean, and classy. They're the kind of razor you'd expect your grandpa to have on his bathroom counter. And most importantly, they work. Shave after shave, they're so smooth, they're precise. I used to go through the crappy store blades all the time, but Harry's are built to last. And they're not just better quality than the other names, they're more affordable. And they deliver. Just set your schedule, and for as little as two bucks, new blades, shaving creams, lotions, everything you need, right to your door when you need it. I genuinely cannot think of a reason not to try Harry's. And I'm not just saying this because they're sponsors. They're the best shaving supplies I've ever used. Try them out. And if you're not happy, your shave's on them. And unlike the other subscriptions, they're really easy to cancel if you want to, too, which is a nice bonus, but... Believe me, you're, you're not going to want to cancel. Getting ripped off isn't funny. Switch to Harry's. Get started with a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. That's harrys.com slash RTG for a $3 trial set. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Remember the Game. It is my retro gaming podcast where every week a buddy of mine and I sit down and we geek out about the games we played back in the day. My name is Adam Blank. Thank you so much for listening to the show. And this week it is episode 232. And we're going back to that little cube that could, the Nintendo GameCube, and talking about one of the four members of the holy Nintendo sports game quartet that, for me at least, practically defined the GameCube era, we're talking Mario Golf Toadstool Tour. I fucking love the GameCube. And aside from, you know, GoldenEye and the wrestling games on the Nintendo 64, I don't think any console has provided me with more multiplayer memories than the Cube did. And, you know, we'd just go out, we'd get some booze, and we'd waste the entire night fighting with each other. There was Double Dash, there was the Mario Party game, Smash Brothers Melee, Tiger Woods, and of course... Those Mario sports games, baseball, strikers, tennis, and golf, all excellent. We covered Super Mario Strikers back on episode 179, if you're interested. It actually became one of our more infamous episodes because I almost died laughing at Mark McHugh's dad, and I'm 100% sure we're going to cover baseball and tennis at some point on the show, but today, it's all about golf, and I actually fired this one up on my GameCube to prep. For this episode of the show, I ended up doing a couple streams of it over on Twitch, and I just had a hell of a time. It is just a solid, solid game from an era where Nintendo wasn't so concerned about making their games super accessible like they are now. Everyone can play. No feelings get hurt. You could play Toadstool Tour with auto everything on so people could keep up, or you could turn that off or not use it and just get super deep with the cutthroat golf, and it holds up today. It's really fucking fun. Uh, making his podcast debut this week is my buddy Joe Gillespie from 4545 Creative. You may know him as the dude that designed all of our merchandise. He's just one talented son of a bitch, and we had a great chat about trying to hit golf balls into pipes and pretending to be good at sports. And we'll get to all that in just a minute, because speaking of pretending to be good at things, it's time for another edition of the Remember the Game infamous intro. And if you're new to the podcast, welcome aboard. Consider this your warning. Our intros are kind of long, but they're fun. And they're almost as exciting as watching golf. Almost, actually, you know, I shouldn't say that because I love watching golf, to be fair. I, I could watch golf all day. Anyway, uh, if you do want to skip it, 
go about 30 minutes up the road. You'll hear the music and we'll get into the golf music or the golf talk and blah, 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 blah. I got to do my plugs. That's how we keep the bills on around here. We have merch. We have hoodies, t-shirts, coffee mugs, posters, all kinds of stuff uh, rocking. Incredible art drawn by my man Joe from 4545creative.com. You can find all of our merchandise at rememberthegamepodcast.com if you're interested. It's a phenomenal way to support the little guy here. And of course, if you're like, I don't do close, I get it. You can always just support us on Patreon. Our membership started just two bucks a month and you're going to get two extra shows every week in exchange for it. You get exclusive access to my gaming news podcast, Game Pass every Friday where I look at all the biggest news in modern video games and I add in my opinions and some profanity and stuff like that and Expansion Pass goes live every Thursday and that's a different podcast every week we do game rankings we look back at characters consoles we do comedy episodes there's a ton of modern game reviews over there Uh, this past week on Expansion Pass we locked in our 2023 New Year's gaming resolutions and well you know we won't stick to them and a year from now we'll all be disappointed in ourselves Uh, right now we're all motivated and fired up and I actually already finished one of my resolutions so y'all can suck it and as is becoming tradition here is a sneak peek of last week's episode of Expansion Pass our New Year's gaming resolutions So one of my goals, one of my resolutions for 2023 uh, is that I've picked four retro games that I want to get good at. I'm probably going to do some streams of these games just on a night or an afternoon where I have nothing to do. I'm going to fire one of them up be like, I'm going to take a run at this game and try to get good at it. And I'm going to try to beat them all fair and square. No save states, no cheating. So, and if you want to know the games are, number one. Sonic the Hedgehog 2. If you've ever watched one of my 24-hour charity streams, each of the last two, three years, we've done these now? Each of the last three years, I've taken a run at beating Sonic 2. Every year I get closer, every year I don't win. And actually, just um, on the weekend, I was playing Haunting Starring Poltergeist for the show on my Genesis Classic, and then I was done, and then I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a run at Sonic. And I played an hour of Sonic 2, and I got to that final fight against Robotnik, Eggman, whatever, the big fucking thing after Metal Sonic. Uh, and then he beat me over and over, mercilessly beat me. And so I'm that close. So I'm like, that one, you can lock that in fucking, you can write that in pen, in Sharpie, something unerasable. And before the calendar is 2024, I will beat Sonic the Hedgehog 2. That's now available in our archives. And this week for Expansion Pass 146, it's arguably the biggest expansion pass of the year. It's the third annual Blankies. It's Remember the Game's annual award show. Our community has been voting, said votes have been tallied. We'll find out what games are taking home some imaginary but prestigious hardware this week. I'll reveal my personal picks for Game of the Year and all the other awards as well. Plus, I always mix some comedy skits in there. We've got a world premiere it's a big new, a very special announcement about the future of Remember the Game Industries, uh, a world premiere announcement. We've got some special guests, including the first ever appearance by a certain spouse of mine on the show. And uh, yeah, I've been working on it for over a week, to be honest. I think it's the funnest episode of the year. It's a lot of work. I hope everybody enjoys that episode this Thursday. So again, two bucks. Get you two extra shows every single week. Instant access to over 300 archived bonus podcasts, plus access to our Discord, the chance to vote in our Patreon poll every month, the ability to submit comments to be read on all of our shows you can dm with me and you get a shout out to get to hear me mispronounce your name like i'm about to do to most of these people a huge thank you to all of our newest patrons katherine katherine henderson eddie mendez victor cartagena cartagena sorry victor that one kid josh raging irish johnny Som- somos ekram asinov Sideshow, I think you guys are just putting these in on purpose to fuck with me. Sideshow Troy, Marcus Holmes, Kyle Kramer, Chris Williams, Adam Blank loves Mario is missing. It's not true. Theor- Theory Demirs, Steven Sbarbaro, Eric Schreiber, Squiggle Bear, Kevin, Eric, those two are fake. Jessica Gorham Penny, Wes, Greg Ryan, I'm a stupid moron with an ugly face and a big butt and my butt smells and I like to kiss my own butt. Zachary O, DJ K, and Zomzilla. Thank you all so much for the support and welcome to Remember the Game Industries. You can find all that at patreon.com slash remember the game. And before we get into uh, the blowing in the cartridge and everything, special shout out to Mr. Freaks Class. If you're all listening to this for letting me chat with them last week, we talk podcasts, we talk video games. It was very, very cool, including the heckler good bunch of kids so thank you all for letting me kill some time in your class uh, oh and i should plug it you can find me on twitch twitch.tv slash member the game whenever i feel like going over there i don't really have a schedule or anything it's just it's just for the lulls all right anyway 
That's it up blowing myself. Let's blow, uh, blow some of you by blowing in some cartridges. How did I fuck that up? It is our opening segment here on the show. I read a few comments and questions from our patrons, usually gaming related, but not always. And we call this segment blowing in the cartridge. He blows all right. He blows big time. That's it, honey. Get into the spirit. <laughs> Let's blow our first blower this week is Stephen Parnell, who wrote in and said, Hey, Adam, it's been a while. I was, it's been a while. It has been. Uh, I was wondering if you could take a main character from one game and put them into another. Who would you choose and what game would you put them in? Uh, you know what? I chewed the fat on this one a little bit, Stephen, and I'm going to stick with something I've wanted to do for a long time. I would take Sonic and just drop him into a Mario game. Something like Mario Odyssey. Something big and open where he could run around. Um... Or conversely, I would take Mario and put him into Sonic. I've always said I'd love to see both those characters get together and instead of doing their crappy Olympic games full of mini games, I'd like to see just like a full blown new platformer. Imagine like Sonic levels where Sonic's ripping around the Mushroom Kingdom and Bowser's Castle and stuff. And then conversely, imagine Mario like platforming in the Green Hill Zone or the Chemical Plant Zone or something. I think imagine like Bowser and Robotnik team up and then Sonic and Mario team up and ah, he's so fucking hot. That's always been the little crossover that I want the most, so I'm going to I'm gonna stick with that. I think that'd be fucking sick. Uh, thanks for writing in, Steven. Good talking to you, buddy. Dill Pickle Rick said, Hey, Adam, do you have a second and third favorite adult animated show behind The Simpsons? I'm going to venture a guess that they'll be South Park and Futurama. My top three will be South Park, The Simpsons, and probably a tie between BoJack Horseman, Rick and Morty, or Futurama. Uh, yeah, you know, if you're talking their whole collective like library, I would put South Park ahead of The Simpsons. I think that the glory years of The Simpsons up to about season 11 or 12 is the funniest television ever made. But South Park's been good for like 30 years and it's not going anywhere. South Park's, I guess not 30 years. What are they at now? They're going to be at 25. So anyway, South Park's fire. So South Park and The Simpsons are one and two and it would just depend on if you want their whole uh, library or just their golden years. And then my number three, Futurama would be up there. So would King of the Hill. It'd probably be one of those two. I know some of you are probably thinking Family Guy. Family Guy, I used to love it, and then it got really bad. I used to love the Cleveland show. I thought Cleveland show was fire. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, I'll go with tie for number three between Futurama and uh, and King of the Hill. I just started watching King of the Hill again on Disney. Fuck me, that show is good. I love King of the Hill so much. Uh, thanks for writing in, Deal Pickle Rick. Squiggle Bear said, hey, madam, first blah, 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 blah. I know you love weird games and the SNES games especially. Have you ever played Uniracer, Unirally in Europe? It's basically a 2D Tony Hawk with mo unicycles. This is one of my favorite games growing up, and I haven't even heard of anyone else hearing of it. I almost thought it was a fever dream until I Googled it to see that it really existed. Absolute madness. Uh, I have heard of Uniracer. I remember seeing ads for it in, like, Archie comics all the time when I was a kid, but I've never played it. I would honestly probably put... Uh, Uniracer, all uh, number two after Act Razor, as like the two SNES games that I hear about the most that I probably should play, that I probably should have already played, but that I haven't played. Number one is Act Razor for a hundred, a hundred billion miles. Uh, but then I'll say number two is Uniracer. I will play that at some point. Uniracer. I, I know what you're talking about. It looks dope, but I just for whatever reason just never, uh, never got around to it. Thank you for writing in, Squiggle Bear, Pee Wee Squitters. Said, Adam, how much more abuse is it going to take before you finally just throw in the towel and say, fuck Sonic? Dude, I don't know, Pee Wee, Pee Wee Squitters. The thing about it is, like, I know I'm hard on Sonic, and I think Sonic Adventure 2 sucks. I know everyone yells at me for it, and I think Sonic Frontiers sucks, and some people yell at me for it, and some people agree with me. But, like, the thing is, is like, I still love 2D Sonic, even though I get really mad when I die, and I die a lot of those games. I love 2D Sonic, and I just like Sonic. I'll never move. I'm always going to be a fan of the character Sonic the Hedgehog. The problem is I just don't think he does well in 3D. And everyone keeps telling me Sonic Generations. And I and I do need to play. I do want to and I need to play Sonic Generations. But uh, I don't know if I could ever bring myself to just say fuck Sonic and walk away from him. I like it. I love his cartoons. I like his movies. I liked his comic books. He's cool. It's just those fucking 3D games, man. And to be fair, for the most part, I prefer Mario in 2D as well. So it's not like just Sonic. Um, I don't know. I, I will say that like, if they say next year, Sega announces Sonic Frontiers 2, it won't be like Sonic Frontiers. There's no guarantee they're going to get my money. I'm going to have to wait and see how this fucking turns out. Like Sonic, Fr I hated that fucking game. Uh, and I wanted to love it, but I fucking hated that game. But like if they were announced Sonic Mania 2 tomorrow, a new 2D Sonic, 
I'd I'd be that'd be a day one purchase for me. So I can't say fuck I I can I'm very I'm on the cusp of saying fuck 3D Sonic. But I don't think I could just say fuck Sonic as a whole. I like that little bastard too much. Uh Calhoun21 said, Dear Mr. Blank, I bought a used Wii five years ago to play Mario Kart with my kids, and today I discovered that it's backwards compatible with a GameCube. Where should I start? That's why you should be buying a Wii. Fuck the Wii games. You got to buy it to play GameCube games. Uh, if you were asking me, where should you start with the GameCube? One of my first thoughts is Resident Evil 4 because that I love that game on the GameCube, but it's pretty well available anywhere now, and there's better versions of it. So I would say if you want to go single player, get Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. I mean, expect to, like, for the record, some of these games are going to cost you $100 plus. But Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door... It's fucking awesome. That game is well worth your time. Mario Kart Double Dash, in my mo- for my for my money, is better than Mario Kart Wii. I, Mario Kart Double Dash is a top three Mario Kart for me. I love that game. And uh, if you've got your kids, you said you bought your Wii to play with your kids. Um, I-, I would recommend Double Dash, Smash Brothers Melee, or any of the four Mario sports games: baseball, soccer, tennis, or um, golf. The one we're talking about today. They're all fucking excellent. So. I would recommend, and Metroid Prime is tight, and Luigi's Mansion is fucking awesome. So it's, oh, the GameCube's so fire. Any of those, those should keep you busy for a long time, not only because there's a lot to play, but because you have to save your money <laughs> to fucking buy all of them. So I'd recommend any of those, Calhoun21. Good luck, and uh, fuck, that's a big, yeah. I think a lot of people forget the Wii was backwards compatible to GameCube. That's a big, big plus on the Wii. Uh, Tim Vitulo. Wrote in and said, hey, Adam, I just finished the first Bravely Default on my 3DS, and I was wondering if you had a chance to check out the series. I recently listened to your episode on Final Fantasy V while I was playing, and the job system in Bravely Default sounds very similar. I know you're not one to mainline JRPGs straight into your veins like some of us, but I appreciated the many elements that they added to respect the player's time and interest engaging in the combat and the story, and thought you would too. SNES JRPGs were also my entry point, and I thought Bravely Default did a good job capturing their essence. It was new and nostalgic all at once. It feels like something right up your alley. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. Like it was a long, uh, uh, oh, sorry. No, I was going to say that was a long comment, but I am going to finish this comment. Actually. I normally don't read comments this long, but Tim, yeah, Tim did a good job. Good job writing in uh, a discussion about modern features in JRPGs, such as new game plus auto battle, speed toggles, etc., might be a cool expansion past topic. These have allowed me to continue to enjoy these games as an adult. And I'm not sure I would have been able to keep up with the releases if not for them. It'd also be interesting to hear about other hot dogs, wish lists for more quality of life features that can make these games more digestible without losing their difficulty. Uh, thanks for reading my rambling cheers. Thank you for rambling, Tim. Uh, to answer your second question first, that's actually not a bad idea for an expansion pass. Um, modern features we want in JRPGs. I don't know. I don't know if I... I, I mean, may, I'm not going to say no, but I don't play a lot of modern JRPGs, so I don't know if I could competently... I, I could. You could argue I don't competently host any podcast. I think I would struggle to make a full podcast fascinating about that but i do think i'd listen to that i think it sounds like an interesting topic to answer your first question i've not yet played bravely default i always wanted to because of that exactly what you said it was very much it appeared to be a throwback to the snes jrpgs which is by far my favorite era of rpgs um but for whatever reason i just i don't know why i just never i never got around to playing bravely default always was fascinated by it never got around to it but never say never stranger things have happened maybe someday tim maybe someday and finally before we move on, it's letter time. It's letter time. Alaskan Bullworm wrote in and said, Adam, I apologize for the lengthy post, but something you said really got me thinking. I'm going to fly through this. You made the prediction that Nintendo would drop the price of the Switch Lite in an effort to break the all-time console sales record. That rubbed me the wrong way when I heard it. Not necessarily the prediction, but the realization it led to. I think combined sales figures for the Switch and the Switch Lite should not count toward that record because they are fundamentally different machines. Sure, they can play the same games, but the Lite cannot be docked, making split-screen gaming damn near impossible and therefore boosting sales figures. If I want to play Mario Kart with my brother and I have a Switch Lite, then he also has needs to have a Switch of some kind, probably another Lite because mom and dad already bought one, so they're not going to buy the more expensive one for the other kid. But if I have a regular Switch and want to play Mario Kart with my brother, I'll we needed a second controller. Growing up, we had one console and multiple controllers. My siblings and I shared that console, whatever it was. However, when it came to Game Boys, we all had our own. So from our house, or from our house alone, the sales of the Game Boy Color were three times that of the Nintendo 64. Combining the sales of what, in my eyes, is two fundamentally different machines just seems like cheating. It's not like combining sales of, say, the PS2 and the PS2 Slim, because they both did the same things. One was just in a smaller box. What say you? It's well said, Alaska Bullworm, and I don't necessarily disagree with it. I want to say we talked about this a little bit at some point, but it's, I don't necessarily disagree with you. If you look at the greatest or the the all-time best video game sales charts, PlayStation 2 sits alone at number one. The 
is it the DS family or the Game Boy? I think it's the DS family is in number two. And that already, now you've got the DS and the 3DS combined for that number two slot, which I know some people would criticize. And I don't know if that's unjustified. Uh, the Game Boy and the Game Boy Color go together. The Switch and the Switch Lite go together. And I understand what you're saying. They're, I guess you could, I mean, I will say agreed. It is a bigger difference between the Switch and the Switch Lite than the PS2 and the PS2 Slim. No question. I 100% agree with that. Um, I mean, I guess like do the does the original PS3 that was backwards compatible and the PS3 that wasn't backwards compatible, they're combined together. The PS4 and the PS4 Pro are combined and the PS4 Pro is an update by a lot of people to get better graphics and better blah, 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 blah. But those are combined into one. The Series X and the Series S are combined. I'm not agreeing or disagreeing with you because I understand your point. Um, I, from the way I, I, I guess, I I don't know. Personally, I don't know. I I don't really have a dog in the, I want to say like, I, for me, yeah, the Switch and the Switch Lite count as the same. I, to me, they count as the same sales numbers. That said, I really don't care. Like, I have no skin in the game. It's not something that I'm losing any sleep over. Um, but I, do you know what I'm saying? Like, the, to me, like, they they play 90% of the same games. And sure, you could argue that, like, people have to buy multiples, but people had to buy multiples of the Game Boy no matter what. People had to buy multiples of the 3DS back in the day no matter what. So, and those counted. So, I mean, I I don't know. I'm I'm sure that there's probably a list out there you know, that says like these are different and they don't count. But like to me, the the DS to 3DS is a bigger stretch than the Switch to the Switch Lite and the DS and 3DS are considered the same. So if those two make it in on the same, then I don't really have a problem with the Switch and the Switch Lite. But I, I'm sure even if they get that record, people, there'll always be that asterisk on it, right? And some people will argue it and that's fine. Again, like at the end of the day, I guess I don't particularly care. I'm a Nintendo fanboy, but I don't particularly care to sell 150 million consoles of any, you know, any size, any type is an impressive as fuck feat. <laughs> In fact, so, you know, like nobody does it. So, um, yeah, I guess it just comes down to what your opinion is for me. Well, I understand the argument. I'll, 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 for, for my money, they're the same. I'll say they're the same, but I understand the logic. Anyway, thank you for all the submissions. We need to move on. Let's change things up and let's get into our Smash Hit segment, the official game show of Remember the Game Industries. It's play one, remake one, erase one. And a huge thank you to Classic Concentration from the NES for unknowingly providing us with the theme music for the show. The rules are simple. Every week I give our patrons three retro video games. They can play one as it was released. They can remake one as a modern game. And the third is a race from time forever. And as always, there are no wrong answers, but there is a right one. We'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, this week, seeing as we're talking Mario Golf on the GameCube, I went with those other three Mario Sports GameCube games I love so much. Super Mario Strikers, Mario Superstar Baseball, and Mario Power Tennis. And this one was close. Play Mario Strikers, remake Mario Baseball, erase Mario Tennis 1 with 26%. But two runner-ups had 23% each. So, like, it was very tight. And what's wild, of those three options that finished in the top three, each of them had a different game getting erased. Fucking crazy. This was one of the closest ones we've ever had. Uh, let's see what a few of you had to say here, and then I'll tell you what the right answer was. Wobbly, wobbly, wobbly wrote in and said, finally, games I can have input on. I'll play Mario Baseball because I honestly didn't even know it existed. I'll remake Mario Tennis because out of all the tennis games, the GameCube version was the least fun in my opinion. And I'll play Strikers because that game absolutely slapped playing it with friends and I wish the current one was half as good. God damn it, wob wobbly, wobbly, however the fuck you say your name. This was your first time you were like, I finally have input on these games. I imagine you've been sitting there every week listening, waiting for a chance to just jump into contestants row and play play one, remake one, erase one, and then what do you do? You spit in the face of my rules and you play one remake one and play one you can't do that you have to erase one now you're gonna have to wait six more months to play again triple secret probation that was your chance i gave you the lead spot and you spit in my face wobbly however the fuck you say your name play one remake one erase one not play one remake one play another one god damn it <sighs> Mike Maloney said, this is more of a be careful what you wish for kind of list. I'll play Mario Strikers because I appreciate what we had more now after playing Mario Strikers Battle League. 
Agreed. I'll remake Mario Sluggers because they need the Springfield Power Plant softball team as DLC. That'd be sick. And I'll erase Mario Tennis because, well, it's tennis. Ducks a flying tennis shoe. And the controls were really tough to react to any serve. And they were not. I mean, all right, I can understand erasing tennis, but I'm a huge fan of Mario Power Tennis. Get good, Mike. And, I, and that comes from the guy who gets so sick of people telling me to get good. The serves aren't that hard. But I appreciate your logic all the way around. And I definitely agree in the Mario Strikers thing. Uh, Joe motherfucking Beach said, play Mario Tennis because it's basically like Big Pong with easy rules and anyone can get into it. The most accessible of the bunch. Remake Mario Baseball because why the fuck not? That game was fun. And erase Mario Strikers because football is tedious. And I say that living 10 minutes away from Manchester United's stadium, I have betrayed my country today. Yes, you have, Joe motherfucking Beach. And I'm sure that the, the I don't know what those guards are with the giant hats that can't move, but I'm sure they're on their way to their ho your house right now to throw tea and crumpets at you. But sound logic, though. I can get on board with that. I would agree, too. I think Mario Tennis on the GameCube is the most accessible. I think Mario Tennis on the Wii U sucked. And Mario Tennis on the Switch was fun, but I couldn't find any online my matches. I think Mario Tennis on the GameCube is fire. Uh, Phil McCracken. Phil McCracken said, play tennis. It's the best behind Mario Golf. Remake baseball because I don't have a GameCube, but I always wanted to try this one. And erase Mario Strikers. I didn't play it before. I haven't played the remake, so it's basically already erased in my mind. I will say, Phil, you should play yourself some kind of Mario Strikers at some point. Because those games are very good. But I like your logic. Uh, all the good names were taken. Said I would play Mario Strikers. I'm not a soccer fan. But this game has bought me countless hours of fun over the years. I'd remake Mario Baseball. We haven't gotten a new baseball Mario or Mario Baseball in a long time. And erase Mario Tennis. Well, fun. I enjoy baseball more. And Strikers is a national treasure. So out goes tennis. I, I don't have a problem with that. I love Mario Tennis. But as a whole, I do like baseball better than tennis. And Mario Strikers is absolutely a national treasure. I can get on board with that. And Alex Gonzalez said, Mamma Mia, this is difficult. I'll play Strikers. It's a banger and it holds up. I'll remake Tennis because more Mario Tennis is always welcome. And I'll erase baseball like the entire sport. Thanks. You better fucking watch your ass, Alex Gonzalez. Baseball is awesome. I, I know people think it's boring. I get it. But I love baseball. I would watch baseball over tennis. My girlfriend's a tennis fan. So I watch tennis with her sometimes. I just don't. It's so boring. Baseball is so much more fun. Anyways, uh, I'm agreeing with 16% of you. I'm going with one of the minorities, including Aaron Sarfati. Star Aaron, whose last name I don't think I'm saying right. Aaron said, first time commenting, as was the style at the time. Nice pull. I would remake Mario Strikers as I've never played it, but been told it's the golden standard for Mario soccer games. I would play Mario Tennis as the newest Switch one was... Well, awful and gimmicky, as are all non-standard Mario games these days. And lastly, I would erase Mario Baseball. I love baseball, but I've never been as uninterested in a baseball game than one that's related to Mario. I know they've made all the different sports games for them, but this one just seems out of place, even with the Japanese culture loving the sport of baseball. Plus, baseball sims just aren't great unless they're trying to be realistic, in my opinion, with the exception of Super Mega Baseball. If you've never played it, check it out on the Steamer when it's on sale again. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with all your logic, but I do agree with your order, Aaron. I myself will play Mario Power Tennis because I I fucking love it i love that game i just think it's so oh the tennis is so fucking good in that game uh, i would remake mario strikers and all i would really do is just i guess i would just tweak the switch one to be more like the gamecube one because i really i have slowly come around on the switch one but it's still not as good as the gamecube one and i'm erasing mario superstar baseball because i like it just fine i really do uh but when i'm gonna play a baseball video game give me mlb the show like, I understand Mario games aren't simulation-y like the simulation ones, but when it comes to baseball, I prefer some simulation. I'm good with just the show. I'm fine. Whereas I don't play FIFA, and I don't really play whatever any tennis games are these days. So that's where Mario can uh, get me my sports fix. So there you go. Thank you, everyone, for playing along. As always, I'm going to tell you what I've been playing over the last seven days as soon as we get a quick word in from our sponsor. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Everyone that listens to this podcast knows about our illustrious CEO, my dog Molly. But the other silent partner behind the scenes is my wife. And let me tell you, my friends, a 17-year relationship with another person that has to talk to and live with you is a lot harder to maintain than one with a dog. We've had our ups and downs, and as you all know, a relationship isn't all sunshine and rainbows. They can be a lot of work. You get out what you put in when it comes to relationships, and talking to a therapist can be a fantastic 
fantastic way to put in some work. They can help you work through your issues, learn to communicate better, and even just provide you with an ear to bend when you need it. I've talked to my therapist about my relationships, especially when it came to my stand-up comedy career and how much I was away from home. And they helped me work on ways to keep my relationships strong even when I was out on the road. Uh, it turned out our relationship was actually better when I was out on the road, but that's that's a story for another day. And I know, right? Therapy. Who has the time these days? BetterHelp hears you, and they're making it easy. Fill out a quick form online, and they'll match you up with a therapist that suits your needs and that'll work around your schedule. You pick the meet times, and you can get your therapy fixed from anywhere over video, phone, or just chat. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit BetterHelp.com slash RememberTheGame today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash RememberTheGame. Or maybe not. I don't know. If we have a sponsor right now, you just heard a word from them. Thank you for sponsoring the show. Sponsor, if you were there. Uh, what have I been playing over the last week? I've been playing a lot of Marvel's Midnight Suns. Really starting to get invested in it now. It's pretty good. It. A lot of jibba jabba between battles, but as you get better at the game, you learn to get through that jibba jabba faster, and the battles are fucking excellent. Uh, I played Sonic 2, uh, which I'll be having a video up on YouTube pretty quick. I was already in Adam Sucks at video games of Mar Sonic 2, but now there's going to be a redemption run. One of my New Year's resolutions was to beat that game, and I fucking did it. I'm still slowly playing Red Dead Redemption 2 every once in a while on my Steam Deck, and I've been playing some Left 4 Dead to get ready for next week's episode. Spoiler. And uh, another spoiler, Left 4 Dead still fucking slaps. That game holds up. It's fire. I love it. And I will be starting uh, The Legend of Zelda Minish Cap, Doom 3, and uh, The Legend of Dragoon. In the Oh, and Dick Tracy on the NES I've been playing a little bit of. And I'll be starting all those other ones for future episodes of the show. So lots to play. Lots to fucking play. And of course, I've been playing some Mario Golf Toadstool Tour, and that's what we're going to talk about. Let's get into it right now. I like to give my guests a chance to sound, or my listeners, a chance to sound off before my guests and I hog the microphone. And a whole bunch of you wrote in about this bad boy. Kevin Bell said, this one and Mario Golf World Tour are the best in the series. Two gripes about this one, having to hit the B button every shot to do a manual shot, and the damn putting gauge speed is too fast. I don't know how many easy putts I missed because I'd either overhit it or underhit it. The courses were great and had so many different modes. They should have just remade this game for the Switch. I agree with that. I fucking hate the Switch version, how it's only two button taps instead of three. The tapping B every shot doesn't bother me. Uh, the putt engage fucks with me, though. Although someone, oh, fucking, I can't remember who it was, and I don't want to guess and get it wrong. I'm sorry. When I was streaming it, somebody brought up the point. If you have to make a really short putt, in Mario Golf Told Steel Tour, start the putt meter, let it go all the way to the end, and then catch it on the way back down. And that changed my life because to tap tap it and hit a quick putt is very very difficult because it's so fast i agree uh sleeper hit said such a peaceful game until you found those taunt buttons spamming the shit out of the top button to annoy the other players when they're taking too long was part of the charm there are also encouraging taunts like princess peach saying hit a pretty one but the villain's encouragements were more like an asshole trying to be polite i use waluigi as some of his encouragements were only cheaters mess up and screaming today at you couch co-op was never the same truth be told sleeper hit i totally forgot about the taunting I'm embarrassed that I forgot that. We didn't put it in the show and it fucking drives me crazy because the taunting was hilarious. Uh, Zachary O said, this game defined all night gaming sessions with friends this summer it came out. I remember more than one occasion where I was up till 4 a.m. with listening to Waluigi's taunts and trying to win the birdie challenge. I love this game so much I started playing golf in real life, to be honest. Oh, golf in real life. Fuck, I fucking, I like watching golf in real life. I fucking hate playing it. But I love me some video game golf. That's awesome. Did it translate? Like, do you go looking for pipes and chain chomps and stuff? I don't know. I'm just kidding. And uh, Fallen Snow Kiku has the final word. Fallen Snow said, I've never really been one for sports games in general, but I have a lot of fond memories of this one. Probably one of the half dozen or so games that my dad didn't dismiss offhand for one reason or another. So I remember playing it a lot with him. I'm really looking forward to this episode. Me fucking too, Fallen Snow Kiku. And it's time to start the episode. I am going to queue up some Mario Golf Toadstool Tour music. And when it stops, Joe Gillespie and I are going to take another look back at Mario Golf Toadstool Tour, which originally released in North America on the GameCube on July 28th of 2003. Enjoy the podcast, everybody. Let's go.
All right. So as I'm sure you'll have heard during the infamous intro, the title of the episode, the music that's playing, the thumbnail, all that kind of stuff. This week we are talking one of, I consider, I consider the four Mario sports games on the GameCube, golf, tennis, soccer, and baseball to be among the best non-simulation sports games ever created. And it's time to give another one of them their due here on the show. And uh, joining me for the first time, you hear this name every week, unless you skip the plugs. And if you skip the club, the plugs, you're, you're a bad person. You hear this name every week. It is the man behind the designs here. I remember the game, our merch and all that fancy stuff. It's my good buddy, Joe from four, five, four, five creative Joe. What's going on, man? How are you? Oh, thanks for having me, Adam. It's great to be here, buddy. I can't believe we're doing you and I haven't talked about this episode for like a fucking year. Like, <laughs> right? I wish someday when this show is dead, someday when remember the game is dead and in the dirt and gone, I'm going to do like an episode of some other show where I'm just going to reveal the episodes that have been cooking for like, like we've had a Jack and Daxter episode cooking for about two years. It still hasn't yeah. happened, but this one is up there as one of the longest. Fuck. I feel like you and I started talking about this during the pandemic. Like we should oh, do this episode. Definitely, definitely, because I was kicking <laughs> around with my my GameCube a lot then too, and I was like, you know what, this is a fun game to play yeah. with my kids. I was like, this would be perfect to talk about. Oh, buddy, and it is perfect. I'll tell you, man. Like, I, I I don't know about you, but like, I I played the fuck out of this back in the day. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, I sold my game collection, and as I'm sure everyone listening to this knows, at least as of January 9th, 2023, when we're recording this. Uh, Nintendo has decided to just not acknowledge the GameCube. They don't reveal those games. Those games don't get released anywhere. It's just forgotten to time. Uh, so I never got back into the GameCube until a couple of years ago when I bought one. And I, I started playing this again just the past week to get ready for this. Holy fuck. I remember why it was like getting on a bike. It was just like, I remember how good this fucking game is. And you said yeah. you played it all like through the pan. Like, was this your pandemic game? So, uh, so Breath of the Wild, I played a lot too on the Switch oh, okay. during the and Tetris ninety nine. Of but course, for GameCube, this was the game I was playing a lot. Yeah, we were playing it with my eleven uh, year old and seven year old. It was which is perfect. They could That's just pick awesome. it up and play. You know, what I mean, it's easy enough, but yeah. it's still fun. Yeah, uh, like old school couch co op. But we used to play this back in the day too. Like. I think we were around the same age, right? Where like GameCube came out and we started going out to the bars and everything like that. So it's yeah. kind of getting away from video gaming a little bit, but we would come home and play like games like this. Uh, Tiger Woods Golf, we played a lot. And, yeah. Uh, Super Monkey Ball. So like Dude, this kind of like party games, I almost see it, you know? I got to say, like, I don't know when it's going to happen, but I'm just, I want to let everybody out there know. Uh, I know I get asked about it a lot. Are you ever going to do a Tiger Woods episode? Yes. A buddy of mine has been on me since maybe episode 10 of the show to do an episode. I was like, cause I fucking, uh, I adore is not even a strong enough word for how obsessed I was with the tiger woods golf games back in the day. But I will say that like golf is maybe the only video game sport that I actually, uh, I almost like the arcadey ones as much as the simulation. Yeah. Most sports I prefer one or the other, but with golf, yeah. There's something to be said for Tiger Woods and the more common, you know, the, the hardcore golf games today. But there's something to be said for Hot Shots Golf and right. uh, and obviously Mario Golf in these games. And like that you're playing it with your fucking kids in, in 2022 or whatever. Yeah. And it still holds like it still holds up. I was streaming it this past weekend and I was like, dude, th they could release. I, I, I don't give a fuck. If you played the one on Switch, this is better than that. I haven't played that one yet. But you're good. You know, I think it's probably next, you know, I like, think I think you're it, it, like the problem with the switch one is, you know, how on this one you could do the auto shot where you tap yeah. a you tap a that's what the that's default what the switch one is. Oh, yeah. Okay. And I hate yeah. that. I want that yeah. third button push, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, fuck that's So. So, OK, I, I do want to talk Mario Golf, but I'll just quickly ask you, um, have you played tennis, soccer or baseball on the switch? The Mario versions? I have not. No. Um, so. My son has an Xbox, so we play a lot, play a lot of sports games on that together. Sure. And then, so Nintendo, I'm just kind of playing the old uh, video games, like the old uh, platformers and stuff like that. And then uh, this, and I do have Tiger Woods Golf on this. Yeah, on the Tiger Game Woods. Game I, too. I love. So. I love those games. Um. All right, that's fine. I, I, I personally would probably. I think tennis is the best. Tennis was. Yeah. Tennis was a borderline unhealthy thing for me. I was so addicted to Mario Tennis. But then this one and Mario Strikers were both excellent. I, I like Sluggers, but I didn't play it as much the baseball one. Okay. Um, before we get into Mario Golf, then I'll just because I have never got a chance to talk to you about it. It's been a long time since we talked GameCube on the show, period. I think. Uh, I'll just ask you, favorite GameCube game? Is it this one or have you got a different GameCube game you like more? I don't I know. know. So I, it's it's tough because I mean I love Wind Waker. 
right yeah. um but uh i have such good memories of super monkey ball like it's this you ever play super monkey ball i haven't and i it's take this, a lot of shit for it because it's I haven't stupid it. like it's this crazy little like party game game and we used to play it all the time like with my buddies like after the bar we come home and, and we continue drinking and and just playing like bowling and there's a mini golf and stuff like that and there's monkey fight it's just ridiculous so like i don't know if it's just the, the nostalgia because obviously like prime matured prime is great sure you know wind waker all those ones but monkey ball is like a top game for me I don't think it's nostalgia, man. I think I've said it many times. I'll I'll argue until something else comes along to take a spot. I'll argue the three most underrated video game consoles of all time are the Sega Dreamcast, the PlayStation Vita, and the Nintendo GameCube. And I feel like of those three, the GameCube in particular has really started, people have really started to appreciate it in the later, you know, in the last decade or so. Yeah. But um, I've never been the world's biggest fan of the Nintendo 64. I'm nostalgic for it, but I was never the biggest fan of the 64. I think the GameCube was just like, I think it has some of the best multiplayer offerings of all time between the Mario parties, the Mario Karts, you know, the, the other party games, like you said, the Mario sports games, stuff like that. But then it's also got Melee, of course, Smash Brothers Melee. But then it's got some phenomenal single player games too. And I just, it was the first retro console I bought after I started this podcast. And I started collecting for it. And I, every single time I fired up, I'm like, fuck, I would like, they could release this as a console today and I'd be interested in buying it. Like it is aged yeah. fine wine, you know? It, it, really it, it has, it, it's, it's held up very well, you know? Yeah. And it's, and it's back in the day, it was portable. Like I had to even had the little the handle, handle on it, the right? The fucking handle. I love that I, stupid I, handle. I, I took it over it. to my buddy's house. Like he, I was still in school and he had bought a house. So I'd take, I took it over there and we'd play uh, Tiger Woods all the time. Yeah. And I'll just leave it there. I take it back and forth. Like it, it was, it was a perfect party. Like yeah, man, uh, console. You know, and the and like and listen, I'm not throwing shade at the PS2 or the Xbox. Uh, I know the Dreamcast is part of that generation too, but as I love the Dreamcast, but the Dreamcast, you know, it it died. Uh, it didn't finish the race. Xbox and PS2 are both great consoles, but I do feel like, and I know some people are going to disagree with me on this, but like I think the Xbox and the PS2 were were still on that like we're trying to make the most realistic looking graphics, the cinematic, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like your metal yeah. gear solids and your halos and your stuff like that. Whereas I feel like, and I, and I, and I, I'm not saying those are bad games. I've played some PS2 games over the last couple of years that I just absolutely adore that I really liked. But I think the, the cartoony art style of, of games like Mario sunshine, Luigi's mansion, Mario golf. I just feel like they've aged better, you know, like they don't look as dated as yeah. a, as a metal gear solid two. Or as a Halo does, and I'm not saying those games are bad. I just think that the the cartoony art style has just aged, and that's why I mean, like, boy, the system. I just I'm a homer. I love Nintendo, but I fuck the GameCube is so good, man. Yeah, ah, I, I mean, it. I think when, when if you look at at when you do try to do the hyper realistic nowadays, I mean, I'm playing God of War, and it's amazing, right? It it, looks, it's it's spectacular. Yeah. So, and you go back and you do some retro game, and it's trying to be realistic, and you're like. Eh but the yeah. cartoon stuff is still cartoony so it's just hd versus you know now it's it's the old uh you know it's the old retro style it's totally. still cartoony so yeah that's probably why it holds up i mean i, I love the controller on the gamecube this oh. game the controls still are awesome you know some of the other ones it's like a little wonky you know the camera work is still sure. like they're they're starting out i guess you know they're getting a feel for them but um it's this this game's still great yeah dude that controller and that's okay so that'll be our segue to talking mario golf we should probably get on topic now we've yeah. rambled for like 10 minutes <laughs> fucking that controller when i fired mario golf up this weekend and i started playing it to get ready for this show i was i as soon every time as soon as i pick up that gamecube controller yeah i'm like this was just i'll argue top three controller of all time and it feels so good and oh it just it it's so compact right and, it just feels right it, it yeah. fits in the hand and the, and it clicks a little bit it has those that, triggers it, are just little yeah. little hammocks for your index fingers it's right. just oh my god and i i like the the buttons aren't all the same size too like i do the, too the green and stuff like that like yeah it's, yeah it's a little different i don't know and then you fire up the game and i have to say before we even get into like the actual intricacies of mario golf I'm not going to say it's the best intro video in the history of games because I think Mario Tennis is. If you haven't seen Mario Tennis uh, for the GameCube intro video, look it up. It, it's fucking outstanding. But this one's close. At the very beginning, when it loads up and it's Mario Luigi's like distorted faces and the reflection of the trophy, like they're yeah. looking through like a doorbell camera. 
Uh, and then it just goes from there. And Wario and Waluigi and Bowser and all their shenanigans. And, so good, yeah. Oh my god, it's so good. And then you start up the actual game, and I I gotta like. I'm not gonna slam it. I do wish there was maybe a little bit more to the single player, mm-hmm. but like there, there's there's enough. Like I I was I, that's all I played getting ready was the single player modes, right? And uh, I was playing through like the tournaments, and uh, like you can finish around in 20 minutes. It feels good within two <laughs> holes. You're it, you're you're rolling. I yeah. I actually uh so I'll, I'm not throwing your kids under the bus, but when you play with your kids, do they use the automatic shot yeah. or do they? Oh yeah. sure, yeah, 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 of course, yeah, yeah. 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 I see. I hate when that's the only option, but I love the way that if you've never played this game, it's got the classic, um, the three click golf where you start the meter up, you stop it at your power, then you stop it at your accuracy, and then you swing. But if you, you use the a, use the B button to do that, if you use the A button, all you do is stop it on your power, and then it automatically does your your accuracy thing. I love the way it so seamlessly does both. Mm-hmm. Because, like you said, you can play it with with a with your kid, or I could play it with Shaylee, who doesn't play video games or whatever, and I can do the three button thing and get a little bit deeper and strategic if I want, and they can have fun and keep up with the basic thing. And it's it's so seamless the way it's right. br- brilliant, frankly. Uh, yeah, my eleven year old will actually go back and forth. You know, what I mean, like because he's he's good at video games. He's a Fortnite sure. guy. He plays a lot of FIFA and everything like that. So it's but uh, if he if he's not paying attention, he doesn't. <laughs> Yeah, yes, yeah. It, you know, he like loses focus sometimes. So, um, yeah, no, it's it is a nice option that it does that. I think it's I think it's great. Like it's, yeah. it, I feel like in the early days, Nintendo, um, I mean, like let's let's be honest, like Nintendo sports games have never been, you know, fucking FIFA or NHL twenty two or like you know deep games, but they were competitive. Like you had to like the best player would win, and I feel like now as much as i love the switch i do feel like their sports games have become very uh one size fits all everybody can play everybody can win right. and i understand they've got a younger demographic they're trying to appeal to and stuff like that but like i feel like the gamecube and this is a perfect example they were right in that pocket where you could get you know two or three people could play it and and you could all be using double back spins and fucking getting hardcore yeah. or you could play it with your kids and have a competitive round and be even the whole it's just it's so simple. It's it's that classic, easy to learn, difficult to master. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it really is. It's fucking it's so well done. Uh, who's your main? Wario. <laughs> oh, Wario. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. What about Who you? Who do you go with? Uh, well, so I like Bowser, but the uh, problem with Bowser is like he has got this fucking hook. Yeah. that is like it is it is i guess actually wario i think goes the slice the other way yeah it does. they're almost it's like good. a boomerang fucking uh-huh. shot like and i and like i'm good but i'm not that good like it right. fucks me over so i actually i started playing it as bowser then i flopped to waluigi yeah uh i like the villains you know bowser I, I, wario waluigi they're 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 uh celebrations and their fails are better you know what i mean yes like, yeah like <laughs> like listen like i mean i like mario like everybody likes mario but sure. he's a square he's fucking boring yeah. like ah, i play running, by the rules all the yeah. time yeah he's running around like jumping up in here like act like you've been here buddy you yeah know? yeah yeah act like you scored before <laughs> sir yes fuck yes and the thing about it is like um if you've never played it every character's got like uh stats for you like how far they can hit it their control like that kind of stuff but every character's also got just like a shot style and i think like mario is just you know the classic straight as an arrow like that's his shot um and it gets up to i want to say bowser and wario are among the worst hooks or slices in the game yeah Yeah. like like it it fucking it it is a boomerang like it goes like out and all the way back um, and I like that because I think it's cool that like you're like, oh, I played this tournament and I lost with with Bowser. Uh, I'll flip it up and try someone with a little bit less of a hook or I'll try yeah. someone with a different. Sl- I like th- the characters feel different. You know, it's not just a palette swap. Yeah, they actually feel like different. Everyone swings differently. And and it makes sense with the character too. like, you know, like the power for these guys, but there wouldn't be as accurate or they'd have totally. a slice or something. It makes totally. complete sense in golf terms and, and uh, you know, with their characters on in Nintendo lore, you know? Yeah, totally. Plus like they, like you said, th- this was the generation where they were really starting to come into their own with like, um, like I always think of Mario Kart 64 and it was like one of the first times we got to hear all the characters voices. Like you'd pick Toad and he'd be like, wow. Yeah. And like we found out Wario's like an angry Russian or whatever the fuck his like accent is like, but this was the, this was the game where they really started to develop like 
little personality traits they had yeah. like like ba- i love the way like when bowser bowser uses one hand like i think donkey kong's the same way like they don't mm-hmm. they don't grip it like a standard golfer just one right. hand back and swing it through and wario's got like that big ass that he's always you know what i mean like i <laughs> i just i i just i really think the characters pop and come to life not to mention they look fantastic yeah oh uh, yeah oh like you're an artist like you must like I don't have an eye for this stuff. I'm I'm a fucking idiot. But like you you're like you're you're talented. Like you have an eye for art. Like they just pop. It's like playing a Saturday morning cartoon. It really is. Yeah, they they look great. Um and like I said, it holds up well and it's it, it nowadays, you know, like everything is HD and perfection and everything like that, but there's something to be said about the cartoon style that's simplistic enough that it translates well across different generations, you know. My kids, like I said, they're they uh they have Xbox and we got the PlayStation for Christmas and they love playing those and stuff like that but they don't skip a beat when I go jump on the GameCube with me yeah. and stuff so yeah. it's not it's it looks great it's you know I could probably do a better setup on it with the translation to the HD TV but it still is nice I mean I don't have an old the CR TVs but it still looks good on that same here yeah I was playing mine on a through my capture card I have like an adapter. Mm-hmm. so I I know I think the technical term is AV cables I always call them the red white yellow cable yeah. Right. Um, but those go into this little adapter and then that puts it out in HDMI, which Same. then went into my capture card, which then goes through my computer and then into a 4k monitor. And even through all that, like it was a little bit fuzzy, but it still looked yeah. really sharp. And it's not just the, it's not just the, the characters, but like, even the, like, I guess my, one of my only complaints about the courses in this game are that the first three or four are almost too normal. Yeah. Like they and then they start to get zany where you're adding in the pipes and the 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 chain chomps and stuff like that. But like even when they're even when they're normal, like even the they just pop. Yeah. Everything is just so bright and colorful and yeah, they're they're a little generic at first. Like they look like actual just regular golf courses almost, you know what I mean? Yeah. But with that Nintendo style to them. But as you get into like Bowser and the Peach one, like they they have that Nintendo like flair to them. You yeah. Know? Like they I, look like courses or a board in a game you know yeah i think that like like i, I would have been fine like the first course is great you know like to win that tournament i think you have to shoot like a plus eight yeah. or better you know what i mean like uh-huh. anyone's gonna win that fucking tournament right and it's just them teaching you how the, the game works and we'll get more into the controls because i want to talk about that we'll get more into that in a minute but like um i feel like even after after one course they should have started adding gimmicks and that's maybe one of my only complaints is there's only seven courses. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the, I, if, if it was me, I would have preferred less time spent on all the stupid mini game modes and maybe more time on two more courses. Yeah. Does that, you know what I mean? And like, I a think couple that more courses sense. with yeah. gimmicks, yeah. you know? I wonder if like the mini games are trying to make it a little bit more one player friendly uh, than it, because, because it, we play it all the time. I, I play it by myself occasionally, but I always play it with one of my kids now, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and I just feel like when you go back and forth with someone, it's a lot more fun than if you're just trying to oh. play play through a, 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 a round of It's like a round of golf, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't want to really play golf with my, by myself. I want to play with my friends, you know? Agreed. No, it's, it's definitely all four of those Mario sports games that I keep talking about. Like, they're meant to be played with your friends. Yeah. Like, it's if I'm going to play golf single player, then I want to play a PGA tour, like something hardcore, yeah. super in depth. And I can like sit, then I'm playing a round of golf and I'm sitting down right. and focusing and reading the greens. And this is like, I want to have fun with my friends and chirp them when they make a bad shot. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. and do that kind simulated of simulated golf by yourself, probably a little bit better. You can make a character play like the, you know, the play the season and build up your, your stats and everything like that. But yeah, or a, it's like a party game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, it's perfect for two or three, four players. Yeah. No question. Three. And I wanted to talk about the controls because, like I said, it, it's it's not necessarily Tiger Wood like super simulationy, uh, but there is some depth to them. And we're gonna get into that in just a minute. First, I'm gonna take a quick break for possibly a word from a sponsor, or maybe there wasn't a word from a sponsor. I don't know. I never know how it works. So that's how I'm doing it from now on. Get used to it. Uh, yeah, the controls in this game. That's what I wanted to talk about. Like I'm playing some like I'm playing PGA Tour 2K23 right now and I fucking love it but I'm playing like and it's got the three button the click 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 but I've been playing it with the, like the analog I'm, I'm I'm using my hands to show everybody even though it's a fucking podcast that's how good I am at this where you like pull it back with the right analog and then flick the right analog forward and it is so precise right. on like how you swing it and stuff um I I do prefer that to the click 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 method but the way this game like 
throws in the the top spin, the super top spin, the back spin, the super back spin, the power yeah. shots, the being able to change where you're hitting the ball to change the trajectory. Uh, it's a, like for a Mario Golf game, especially. It's surprisingly there's a lot of layers to the. It, there's a lot to it. It's it's, it's, it's robust. Yeah, it's it's surprisingly robust for a, like a simple game, right? You can do a lot of different types of shots. Yeah, like the. You know, you hit the ball a little bit lower. You can you can adjust where you're targeting the ball. You, you give it a nice little arch. The spin is helpful. My kids don't do that as much, so I, I like, of course you can't play you can't play like that. You know? Yeah. Now you're cheating. Yeah. Yeah. I get I get that. But like yeah. but like if you're playing it with your buddies and everyone knows how to play. Uh-huh. All bets are off. Fucking right. top speed it up. And I like oh, yeah. like so yeah. If you've never played it, like you push A to start the meter going up toward the top, and then if you just hit A to line up your power that's it then the computer will do your accuracy and then you're done but if you hit b then it comes back down toward your accuracy and then you've got to hit a or b again to line it up with that little line at the where it started and if you hit mm-hmm. a dead center you hit a perfect shot and the further left or right you go the more you'll hook it or slice it or whatever but right. then in addition to that if you double tap a then you'll put top spin on the ball so it'll it'll like and what i love about the top spin like is it keeps it mario y is yeah. it doesn't just roll forward it does the like little um uh like the burnout like it leaves a little fucking trail behind it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and if you do the backspin, it'll do the same thing, but it lands and then like, and it backspins. Uh-huh. Or if you tap A B, you'll put on super top spin. Or if you tap B A, you'll do super backspin. And it if it sounds complicated, if you've never played it, it might seem like it. But you play a couple of rounds, and it's like second nature. Yeah, it's pretty you know? easy. Yeah. What I yeah, love it- about it, uh, when I was playing it the other day, is uh, I would plan on putting top spin on. But then I would realize like, oh, fuck, I went way over on my power. So then in that half a second, while the bar is coming back, you're like, no, no, readjust backspin. You know what I mean? Because right. you're like, yeah, fuck, you now I'm going past. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. Yeah, I wish you could do that in real golf, right? You know? <laughs> fuck. <laughs> fuck me, dude. If I was even a quarter of as good at real golf as I am at video golf, I would I would enjoy real golf exactly. instead of fucking yeah. hating it. Right. Do you golf in real life? Do you golf? I do. I, I work for a company that's in the golf industry. So we, we go out oh. and uh, everyone is good and, and I'm awful. You know, what yeah, I mean? yeah. So it's hilarious. But Best... yeah, I, I enjoy it. You know, it's, it's just not not good at it at all. Dude, it's <laughs> fucking I I remember one of my buddies telling me anyone that says they're good at golf is lying. They're like, there's two types of golfers. They're like, there's the golfers that know they suck and just own it, and they're the golfers yeah. that pretend they own they don't suck. Right. But they still suck. They're like yeah. every. They're like everybody sucks. I don't know. Anyways, I think when someone asks you if you have a handicap, then you know that they're good, right? They're like, yeah, what's your handicap? yeah. I'm like, well, I, I, have a I still don't know. Like, I have a joke in my act about someone being like, "What's your handicap?" And I'm like, "My eye. I don't know." Like, because I, I have no idea what the fuck a golf handicap even. Right. Yeah. And I'm glad this calculated. game doesn't. At least this game doesn't fucking get into that shit. No. No. Um, no. But I like but, that stuff, and like I like that you can like do the power shots, do that, and then oh, that the power shots. Do you use your power shots? Uh, not that well. <laughs> no, no, not well. No, of course not. Um, when you tee off, you can hit B and and you switch from like regular drive to like power drive. Uh, everyone's thinking of Simpsons right now. You have selected power drive, mm. but and then you get like a finite amount of them. And if you nail both the power and the shot, like the accuracy thing, then you get you don't lose one. Then you keep your power shot, and usually. By about the twelfth hole, I'm out of power shots. Yeah, like I've, right. I've I've burned all of them. Um, but even like that kind of little stuff, stuff like you can change it. Like, dude, have you ever? I'm sure you have. You'll end up in like a bunker, and then it shows your shot preview, and your shot preview is hitting the top of the bunker. Yeah, and then you're fucking scrambling through all your clubs and adjusting where you're hitting the ball, and nothing just trying helps. to find yeah. nothing helps. It's fucking oh. I understand it's realistic, but it's also horseshit. <laughs> it's fucking, I've been trapped in. So then you've got to hit it backwards to get out of the fucking bunker. Yeah. Oh, get the fuck out of here. And I feel like they put, they point, sometimes it gets a little cheap and they point you in the wrong direction. I don't know if they're doing it on purpose, but like you're going to screw up if you do it that way. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like if you're just kind of rushing through trying to hit the next shot. Yeah. Is, you know, you're like, oh, and, and you're bouncing off a wall and you're like, what, what, why did it point me that way? You know? Yeah. Right. Like the D, D, and I will say too, actually, that's a great point. One of the things, excuse me, that surprised me a little bit when I went back to replay it was, especially as you get into the harder, the, the, the further courses that are a little bit tougher, uh, the number of courses where like, say it's a par five and there's just mountains and fucking shit everywhere. Yeah. And you're like, there's a surprisingly amount of like if you just default go with the strongest club hit it as far as you can you're fucked 
you're going to end up trapping yourself. Like it almost, it, 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 it forces you to go into like that overhead map and kind of look at the layout be like, right. yep. okay, I, I can hit this straight, but instead of using like my one wood and driving it as far as possible, I'm going to club down. So I stay further back from that mountain so that I have enough room to get the ball up and over it, like for my next shot and stuff like that. And if you hit one wrong shot and bounce off something, I had one round while I was playing the other day where I ended up shooting a five over on one hole. And it cost me the tournament because I, I tried to do one fancy shot. It didn't work. And then I ended up trapping myself and I was just You're screwed. Yeah. yeah. I feel, Bowser's Badlands, I feel like is a lot like that. You know, like, yeah, I always pull back on that and see the, the course overview because it's, you know, it's, it's like, I don't know which hole it is, maybe eight, but like you're uphill and there's like layers and you, and if you go the way they're sh- telling you to shoot, you can't access that unless you backtrack and go back up and around. It's yeah. like, it's, it's, you got to pay attention. <laughs> you do. Like it, like the first few, again, the first few maps, of course, it doesn't matter, but yeah. those last, yeah. Right. Like, dude, you know what hole fucks me every time is the peaches castle course. Uh-huh. Uh, I think it's that course. There's a hole where it's like the stage, the first stage from Mario 64, where King Babom is on the top of that fucking oh. three layer mountain, like a wedding cake. Right, and the hole and the hole is on the top floor, the top level, and uh, you have to basically climb that fucking mountain. And yeah. even if you've got your shot lined up because you can see your trajectory, if you miss your shot at all, or if the wind fucks you, now you bounce off that mountain, or you end up right in front of it. Now you got to waste a shot going back. Like I actually, I like I, I want gimmicks. Like earlier in this podcast, I was complaining about the first few round uh, courses don't have enough gimmicks. Right, but yeah. then there's a couple of gimmicks like those ones where I'm almost like, this is fucking ridiculous. Yeah, like it almost yeah. starts to go too far the other way and piss me off. But maybe it's just yeah, it's a little cheap. It's a little cheap. It's funny though. It's because, a lot cheap. Fuck yeah, you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. When I play with my kids, like uh, it'll, it'll even the playing field a little bit because I'll be going first and they're like, "What are you doing? Like, why are you shooting it that way? You know?" Yeah. <laughs> I pull back and show them the right way, and they're like, "Oh yeah, like, yeah. that makes sense now." But it's yeah, it's it's a little cheap. Oh, it's fucking it's like it's it doesn't it doesn't like it it I, I want to pick my words carefully because if I if I say there's a big difficulty spike, everyone's gonna be like, get good, you suck. And you're right. Yeah. But like yeah. there is a difficulty spike. The first three or four courses, you can just close your eyes and fucking yeah. cakewalk through. And then and then all of a sudden it starts implementing these pipes, which I, I love the pipe implementation. Mm-hmm. And then the wind starts to pick up, and then you start looking at these holes where you've got to be able to chip it up on top of mountain ranges and stuff. And once you get to right. like, like, I love that peaches castle course, how it ends in front of peaches castle. Like, yeah. I just think that's fucking tight. Bowser's course is rad, but Bowser's you're right. Bowser's course is where shit starts to, it separates the, now we're talking dark souls. Like now it's fucking <laughs> now, now, and now it starts to get fucking serious. And then once you beat them all, then you can go through them again on the star mode where oh. like, you don't just have to finish the course to like, because like there's tournaments and and to win the tournament you just have to either have the best score or tie for the best score, and to be honest like the first few tournaments like you just need to hit par or just over par and you're right. fine. Some of those star tournaments, man, you got to shoot like ten under and shit to win those tournaments. Some of them get fucking tough. I'm like, not that good to do them. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can also like unlock the star versions of every golfer that are a little bit better, and you get the unlockables. And- Man, I don't know, man. Good. I just, I, I really, I really like it. I do think there's a lot of meat on the bone. There's your one. I do. Um, I'm curious. Cause you, I don't, I haven't been playing. I don't have any friends. Like I've been playing it by myself. You play with mm-hmm. your kids. Like I, I've never, even when we used to play it back in the day, I never put a lot of time or effort into those mini games. Do you guys, do you use them? I'm, I'm just curious. Like, are they every now and then? It? No, we're, we're, we're playing like a, a nine a back nine or something we're doing skins game like that but not we're not playing the mini games as much you know yeah yeah I, like, go ahead sorry like they want to sit down and and uh go through like a hole and they yeah <laughs> they want to go through like the the whole course i'm sorry and uh and the mini games they're very arcadey i guess you know yeah. what I mean? like yeah. and uh i don't know it just i think I think I lost me on that one. Sorry. No, it's I truth be told. Like, I, I, I mean, I used to be a huge fan of sports games. I don't play as many as I used to or, as, as, as these days, but I used to love yeah. them. And I've never been a big fan of all the little like, and I know Mario's not the only game that does it, but like in this one, like if you've never played it, there's stuff like uh, there are giant floating rings on the course and you got to hit the ball through the rings or you right. got to pick up coins 
while you're playing through it and whoever picks up the most coins wins. And I just like, I guess, you know, different strokes for different folks. I've never found that fun. Like I'm fine between flipping between stroke play where it's just total strokes and like skins. I love playing skins. Yeah. Uh, where it's, it doesn't matter how many shots you take, you play per hole. Right. Uh, like I fucking love that kind of stuff. But uh, I, I, yeah, I've, I've just never found those other like, and, and that's where I was. That's like, I guess if I have a one criticism of this game and it's personal preference more than it's a bad design, I would have rather, like I said earlier, them remove all those um, or at least move some of them, like leave one in, leave the coins or something in and give me two more courses. Yeah, because that's the one thing, especially like you said, if you're playing it by like these games are meant to be played with friends. If you're playing this by yourself. Once you get good, you can do everything in a couple of days and then you're like, well, now I got nothing. You know, obviously, this is the, you know, the time before online and stuff. Uh, there's just nothing else to do. Yeah. You know, right. like it's, yeah. I don't a couple know. more, a couple more courses would be good. I think, I think that is one of my criticisms too. It's a little short on that. Yeah. But, but those, those last couple are, are pretty tough, right? Oh, buddy. Yeah. Those last, they'll keep you around for a little while. Those last yeah. couple, they'll, they don't fuck around. Those last couple play for keeps. Fuck yeah. me. I actually, truth be told, like, I know as a kid, well, as a kid, I was like, you know, 20 when this game came out. But like back in the day, I know that I, I did everything because I was obsessed with this game. Um, playing it now, like, I haven't gotten past Bowser's course yet. Uh, I got to get good. I'm not, I guess I'm not good. I got to get good. But yeah. You know. Yeah, there's some codes and cheats too. You can find them online, so that they're helpful as well. Oh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Fucking what a dude. That was one of the things too. When I fired it, so I turned this on on stream. Uh, and again, it was my first time playing it in, in probably close to 20 years. And it yeah. was just like nostalgia overload. And all of us were watching, everyone watching, and myself, and we were all just like, what a different era. Like when I fire up PGA Tour 2K23 to play it now, like it's a great time. But like, it's got to check the servers, connect to the servers, install updates, do all these balance. Right. And it's like, there's something to be said for just put the disc in, turn it on and play your game. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's one of those things I miss about retro gaming. And GameCube is funny like that. So I wonder, because uh, I don't know, the couple of the Tiger Wood games I had, they're two discs. You know, yeah. you'd load up, you, you'd play around and be on the back nine, be like, please insert, you know, disc B or <laughs> disc two or something like that. So I wonder if that was one of the limits here because there are those mini discs like yeah. is that why it's only you know five courses or whatever it is and and some mini games are they're not as large as files you know? such a fucking nintendo always has to do something weird a little weird like the nes and the snes were normal great consoles nintendo yeah. 64 they're like let's go with cartridges even though it'll cost us final fantasy 7 and all this yeah. it'd be more expensive and all this shit the gamecube is tight but they were like should we use discs well let's use these little fucking mini discs that nobody else wants the Wii, let's make motion controls. The Wii U, let's give it a horrible name and tie it to an iPad. Like, they're just, fuck. I, that's why people dunk on me for saying this. I, this whatever the successor is to the Switch terrifies me. Because I'm yeah. like, Nintendo's got a reputation of doing something stupid after doing something great. I just, yeah. I haven't, I haven't really followed. I'm not sure if there's been leaks or anything like that. But I know yeah. there was like, they talk about a delay or anything like that. But I wonder what that is. Because the switch is portable you know that's yeah. the that's the little niche the cliche thing that they've done with this one so yeah. I don't know, they're gonna just soup it up like super <sighs> like how is that gonna you know i don't know i I don't think they ever get away from the portability now i think they realize like that's their bread yeah. and butter but right. like am i the only one there's just there's a small part of me that's like they're gonna put games on like eight track or something <laughs> like that and just do something stupid and anyway i don't know i i like the i like those little mini discs are cute i like the way you push the button in the middle and they pop it up pops up just, yeah just yeah. an odd, odd decision. Um, did you ever link it to a G, a GBA? I never did. No. I, I, okay, all right. Then no. we have nothing to say about. It. I just if I don't bring it up, people will be like, I can't believe you didn't bring up that it links to the GBA. I never did it, so I don't no. know. I don't know what else to tell you guys. I, uh, I have a confession. I never even owned a game, a Game Boy. You know, like I never, right? no, never had one. We They're in my cool. house growing up, I have, I have five older brothers. We had like always had a Nintendo, and then my one brother bought a Sega. You know, and we replace sports on that and stuff like that. But sure. I've had all the Nintendos. Like I would, and I, I like you. I I screwed it up, and I would just trade in one for the newer one. So I lost those original ones, at least for the the GameCube and stuff like that. But uh, and I never owned a game Game Boy. I don't think you're the only one that. I guarantee you, every single person that did that regrets doing it now. Oh my God, yeah. But but like back then, you're like, I have a finite budget. I'm a kid. Yeah. I need, and I, that'll get me a cheaper. Super Nintendo or fucking whatever. Right. I have to. I was do working that. at a deli trying to get money for beer. Uh, just, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck. fuck. Yeah, but like at the same time, there's something like I, 
I, I know this is going to make me sound like a privileged piece of shit. I am. I'm very lucky. I get it. But like, if I want a new game now, I'm like, I gotta go buy a new game. Yeah. Like, I feel like, yeah. you know, and I kind of take it for granted. I'm like, I'm bored of this game. I'm not going to play it anymore. When you were a kid, like and you saved up your money to buy a game. It was like, that was, yeah, a, yeah. that was like, like the way I buy a car now is the way I bought a video game when right. I was a kid. It was like, yeah. do my research, think about it, stress about it. This has to count because this is my game for the next six months. Yeah. Something beautiful about that. You know? And then if you try to like sell it back to one, you know, GameStop or I don't know, we used to have a place called Funko Land. They'd rip yeah. you off. You know, you're getting like ten bucks for oh, it. Oh yeah, you, know? you get fucking you get screwed. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly. Like, but so no, you really had to choose wisely. This was a good one though. This totally. was totally yeah. I, nope. I do, I I do love this game. Uh, I think its replayability is great on it, and Me too. it's still fun. I you know, just have a couple kids. You can play with. <laughs> <laughs> just to play games with uh fuck tell shaley like, I, really I think we should have a dad, kid she's I, like you, know, you just I want someone to... to play mario golf with don't you I'm like yeah i do yeah um and then it turned out the kid would even like video games and i'll just like disown them and it oh, of becomes like a they, super they villain origin everything. story yeah. yeah they reject everything you, yeah. you did so i hate video games dad <laughs> uh fuck no i yeah, i agree with you man i i lo- like i love all the sports games on the gamecube i love the gamecube but this is uh I was floored when I fired. I, I streamed twice in one day, which I rarely do. I streamed yeah. it for a couple hours, had so much fun that I, after dinner, I fired it up, and played some more and I'm going to play some more this week. I'm like, it's just fuck. Is it good? And like, I'm yeah. a big fan of the Mario golf franchise as a whole. And I think Mario golf on the game boy advance was good. And I think Mario golf on the 3ds was good, yeah. but I think this is the best one. Like this is, this game is just timeless. Like they could release this today. I fucking wish they would. Charge Just 20 bucks for it. Put it out yeah. today. Put online yeah. in it. People would pay it in a heartbeat. Right. Yeah. Um, so good. Anyway, I think we've covered just about everything. I'm sure we've missed something. Every time we miss something, I get yelled at. But I think we've missed, we've, we've covered most of the basics. Great yeah, fucking game. Just, it is a fun game. Like they're like the like we the little things inside the courses. Like you hit the bomb bomb and it blows up and everything like that. Like yeah. shoots your ball and everything like that. It's just a fun game. A fun yeah, game. The, like, the the risk reward of the pipes. Yeah, is it, like if you can get in that pipe, you get a big uh-huh. shortcut. But you miss it and end up behind it. Yeah. Oh, it's hey, like you're fucked golf. forever. It's like mini uh, golf on steroids. You yes. Know what I mean? <laughs> uh, it's, and like sixty four, the Mario golf on the sixty four was fun, and we'll cover that someday. Uh, but this one was just yeah, just leveled it up to the up. This is Super Mario World to Super Mario Brothers. Mm-hmm. From 64 to this. Like, it's just the, on steroids. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, how the fuck are we going to score this thing? I mean, uh, there's 18 holes in a round of golf. Yeah. I think 18 that makes mix. sense. Yeah. That makes too much sense. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's do that. Okay. You're the guest. I need time to think. I'll put you on the spot. Joe, <laughs> what do you score Mario Golf Toadstool Tour out of 18 in 2023? Out of 18. Um, yeah. Oh, wait, I, I wait, 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 wait. Because it's golf, we're gonna go reverse, and so the lower the score, ah, so you're gonna the go better. I just thought okay. of that. Yes, so like okay. one would be a perfect score. So one would be a perfect score. Yeah, because that's okay. you know you're, it's yeah, yeah, like a par yeah. eighteen hole. Yeah, ah, so, I like that. All right. So I think it's like it's probably like a fifteen under or like a sixteen under. Like it's it's Whoa. it's up up there. I think it's high up there. Or maybe like a fifteen, and then you have a birdie, and then you're done for the day. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like you walk off on that. You know. I like it's a, it. It's a, I think it's a very good game. It's robust enough um, with with the courses that it does have. I like to play it with other people. You know, I think mm-hmm. it's it's excels at that, and uh, I recommend it all day. You know, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I'll give it like a sixteen under easy. I I when I bought it, it was one of the first two games I bought when I rebought a GameCube. I bought this and I bought Mario Kart Double Dash. Um, and I, I think they each cost me about seventy bucks Canadian off of like a. You know, yeah. a reseller or whatever, which is like the price of like a switch, the, like a normal game. The price today. of what it was, yeah, ten more and, dollars. Uh, that probably, you know, it's not. Yeah, it's not and, and I, I no regrets. Like, yeah. it's, there's some retro games where you're like, "Fuck, I'd really like to buy that," but I'm like, "Can I spend eighty dollars on a game yeah. I'll beat in an hour, like an NES yeah. game or something?" This, like, I bought it like a regular, like an Xbox or a PlayStation or a game or a Switch game, and uh, no, reg- I'll keep playing it now. Like now that yeah. I've started, I'm like, "Fuck," and it's just got me foaming at the mouth to get my hands on strikers and tennis like foaming at the mouth fuck it's so good i those are expensive i, I keep seeing them online and they're like it's more where i see them it's like a hundred dollars i'm like it's, <sighs> dude no. gamecube is fucking tough because the good games are fucking expensive because I almost i mean i i love to see it on online like a virtual gamecube um just even if it's just to drive down some of the prices oh, of the games fuck. out there you know 
<laughs> I, you know what? People have been debating whether or not we're going to get GameCube on the Switch, and I, I think if we were going to get it, we would have got it by now. I think, oh, yeah. I think we'll get them on the next one, and I think they're gonna. I don't think they're gonna be part of a subscription. I think they're gonna charge. I bet you they start being like, hey, you know, you want Thousand Year Door, you want this Double Dash, Metro, yeah. whatever. It's you know, I bet you they'll charge twenty or twenty five bucks. Whatever, and, whatever the next Switch is, probably yeah. like that. You know, yeah. yeah. And I know some people listening to this are probably like, oh, that's bullshit, but it's like it's Nintendo. Nintendo knows what they have. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I know that's like the joke when it comes to selling something and being like, I know what I have. Nintendo knows what they have. They have GameCube games that we all fucking want. So uh, no regrets though. Great fucking game, buddy. I'm so glad we got to do this. You and I have talked about doing this for so long. I'm so happy that this game has been covered on the show. Um, You're a busy guy. Obviously, like I already mentioned, I literally mention it every single week during the intro. You are the man behind all of our merchandise and a lot of the designs. And I'm wearing a hoodie right now and you designed, you drew that. Um, That's your work. Yeah. If people want to find your uh, artistic uh, adventures, where can they find your stuff? Yeah, I'm I'm on Instagram and and Twitter uh, under uh, Gillespie Draws. So that's probably where I spend most most of my time, the little bit of time I have, (laughs) you know, uh, on those pieces. But, you know, you'll see... I'm sure we'll be doing some stuff together and we'll have some, some art out there and sure. options. So we'll see them soon. Hopefully, you know, Fuck yeah. find me there. I, I don't really have anything else to offer. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's perfect. You'll be able to find those links in the description of this podcast. Show them, show them some love, show them a follow the official artists. Yeah. I remember the game industry. Yeah. I, I always joke that like, um, I've learned the secret to success when you're as untalented as I am is to find talented people and just attach <laughs> like a leech on the bottom of a whale of a, wha- a belly of a whale. Uh, right. I am attached to you. And I'm like, he makes me look better than I fucking am. That's if, for true. You fake it till you make it right. Fake I mean... it till you fucking make it. My friend story. <laughs> that's graf- going to be the name of my book someday. Fuck I'm a professional graphic designer. I make a living drawing. And I'm like, how do I, how did I manage to do that? You know? you have, but I'm surrounding talent. myself with, you know, good people in marketing, you know? Fuck yeah. <laughs> I love it. Um, buddy, thank you not only for doing this episode, but just thank you for all your help with the show over the last few years. Like you came on in case anyone was wondering, like, it's not like Joe lives down the road from me. Like Joe, Joe's one of you, uh, you American folk. I'm not going to say where he lives. His address. No, I'm not going to say that. You but can't like, tell where I live from my Philly accent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's just, a, he just, he just listened to the show and then reached out and we just started collaborating. And, uh, I'm yeah. very grateful that you did, man. You're a really good guy. And, uh, talented motherfucker and i appreciate i appreciate your your help with the show and i appreciate you doing this episode today hey thanks thanks for having me here and like like you said i've been early i don't know if i was one of the early early guys you know some of the other guys but uh it's been great seeing you thrive and hopefully my appearance here doesn't derail that <laughs> <laughs> no 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 mark McHugh will be the death of the show someday i promise not you uh buddy good stuff thanks joe That's going to do it for this week's episode. Joe, thank you so much for giving me a call and talking Mario Golf Toadstool Tour. And every single one of you nerds listening to this right now, whether this was your first Remember the Game or your 232nd, thank you so much for listening to my stupid podcast. I very much appreciate it. Uh, If you didn't hate it, hey, you know what you should do is you should maybe leave us a good review on your podcast service. I'm not quite sure what they accomplished, but if the good podcasters are asking for them, bet your ass we're going to do it. And if you want more of these, I've got you, fam. There are hundreds of bonus episodes waiting for you right now at RememberTheGamePodcast.com. You can sign up at our Patreon for just 2 bucks a month and get instant access to hundreds of bonus shows with multiple new episodes every week. And don't forget, this week, Thursday, January 19th, it'll be our third annual Blankies on Expansion Pass. It is our Game Awards. We'll be naming the Game of the Year, PlayStation Game of the Year, Xbox, Nintendo, RPG, Sports Game, Indie Game. There's a whole bunch of categories. There's some comedy skits. I've got some special guests. I've got a world premiere announcement and an announcement about a future... uh, Trying to see what I can say without spoiling. Some future content here at Remember the Game. So it's going to be a pretty fucking exciting episode. I'm pretty stoked to get that one. I've been working on it for over a week, so I hope y'all enjoy it. That'll be going live on Thursday. Uh, you can find me over on the old Twitch box, wherever you want, twitch.tv slash member the game. Come by and say hi. I have no real schedule, so just follow. It's free, and then it'll tell you when I'm online. You can goodbye and 
argue with me about why Captain Picard is better than Captain Kirk. <laughs> You're out of your minds. Uh, don't forget to check me out on Twitter and Instagram at Member the Game, and don't forget to follow Joe, our resident artist, on Twitter and Instagram at Gillespie Draws. You can find a link to that in the description of this podcast if you want it. All right, that is it. I'm going to thank some Patreons and get the fuck out of Dodge. Thanks for listening, everybody. Tomorrow the Blankies go live. Friday it's Game Patch 123. All the biggest news in the world of video games. And a week from right now, it'll be Remember the Game 233, which if the stars all align will be about the fucking outstanding left for dead all right see you next week everybody take it easy cheers goodbye remember the game is brought to you by our patreons i could not puke up all the content i turn out every week without all of your support the following people are at the senior executive vice president level or higher at patreon.com slash remember the game and as such i'm contractually obligated to ramble off their names as quickly as possible at the end of every episode this week i've sorted you alphabetically by the email addresses attached to your accounts so this one's gonna be this is gonna be tough this is all over the map here we go a huge thank you to Derek Cox, Just a Fish, Adam Martinet, A Dude Named Adam, West Gen, A-Town, Alex R, Itchy Netsuru, Andre, Angie Hudson, Dave Thompson, Andrew Wright, Benjamin Atkins, It's the Bigfoot, Zamatos, Brandon DeZeba, Michael Barjudina, It's OG, Hago Waffle, Brandon Halmheckel, Dan Fuselman, DNA Gaming, Biddy, Captain N, Nerdy Hybrid, Bobby Litton, General Fury, High Plains Drifter, Elijah Burns, Hitchy Poo, DP Pooper, Chris Flurry, Charlie Medeiros, Chris Dickin, Triple, Makeshift Mallow Magic Money, Christian Gabriel, Drugs are Bed, okay, James Clark, Cody Richardson, Colin Bollinger, Adam Fletcher, Zach Coiner, David Marcus, Daniel, Chris Williams, Dave McGee, Oh My God, It Froze, Dakota Guy, Digital Dave, Decoy Man, Deal Pickle Rick, Doug Dorn, Dem Boys on the Roof, Current Remember the Game Hall of Famer Mark McHugh, Ryan Maurice, Dr. Nightmare 23, Daniel DeVore, Eric James, Eric, E-Man, Trucker, The Stone Shooter, Nomad, Shorzy, Fraser Burns, Brant Hewitt, Gar- Graham, G9PSX, Maverick Marty, Jameer Williams, Lucas Valadez, Heman Demon, Faded Sufferance, Roldy in the Deep, Holmes, P- Phil Lent, Ian Keg, Isaias, Evolva, James Black, Welsh Destroyer, Sharonic, Jerry the 3D Printed Sawstrich, John of the Adult Children Podcast, Jake Carter, John M. Watkins, Joel LeBlanc, Joey Mercury, Beaver Boy, Laces Out Dan, John Jameson, Joey, or Johnny CCDC, Oroku Saki's Gardener, Chuggy 20, Chugger, fuck, this is hard, Chugger 22, Jordan, Rage, Raging Irish, Jeff Bergeron, Stud Still Smash, No One Cares, Sleeper Hit, Alexander Camps, I'm a stupid moron with an ugly face and a big butt on my butt smells, and I like to kiss my own butt. We have two of them now by the way kevin monroe ryan kinchin postman chris lovin munch Makuchi, kayach aaron lawson gabe bud lightyear mark sneed leroy westrich angry ticks matt hamilton beef dingleberry bulma simp mojo the helper monkey tristan anderson mark but not McHugh, phil mccracken zonko 504 morgan mr papa giorgio dp cooper esteban navarro naf e nathan tromblay brian niece cam nelly 23 nick creature nicola musty beetle b money james sanabria stephen parnell denzalo ryan Perry, Russell Aldridge, Alex, Alexis Ramos, Sean Ramos, Randy Barrage, Titan420, Slick Rick, OT Plays Games, Knife Goes In, Guts Come Out, Hatrick Swayze, Why Up the Surgeon Who's Not a Surgeon Row, Ray San Wontonga, Ruben Elizald, Romaldo Marquez, Squeak Nuts, Mercury869, Max Sandin, Sam Carpenter, Bucky the Beagle Erger, Blaine the Hoagie Man, Steve Dalp, Timmy the Exuberant Turtle, DBXJ, Edridge FPV, Jimothy, Sam Wright, Solomon Soto, C Spin, Robbie DLC, Squint, Steven Sparborough. Joe Stone, Scary Terry, That One Kid Josh, Mike Maloney, Theorand, Thomas Smith, Timothy Sabrinsky, Doogie, Tone Bone Swiss, Fuzzy 99, Quiet Place Queen, Trevor McKee, Hired Goons, Frosty Feet 492, Tyler Bauer, Wolf Magic 21, Lord Longrod Von Hugen Dong II, John Woodruff, Denton Van Zandt, J Vision 719, Skilleroni Works For Me, Wolfgang Darren, Darth Sky, Walter, Kia Pup, Mizuru, Joe Buck, Tunable Power, Arctic Vision, Phil Vow, Zane Donovan, and Zach Shepard. Dude, I thought things were going off the rails there, but I fucked and rallied pretty hard. Thank you all so much for the support. Talk to you on the next one. Purple Monkey Dishwasher.